Asukwa was pointing towards the door. He seemed to be seeing something no one else was seeing. His eyes popped out as he held his neck screaming. <coughs> tick, tock, tick, tock. Once upon a time, in a peaceful village with tall palm trees and a river where life never ceased, the people worshipped a powerful deity called Ekwonkawu. No one had ever seen this deity. And if you really wanted to know what it looked like, then ask a cheating woman tortured <laughs> by labor pains or a dying man who married a cheating wife. Perhaps they could tell. Ekaite was married off at a tender age of 14 to Asuko, a man the age of her father. Asuko loved Ekaite so much and couldn't wait for her to bear his children. And so at the age of 20, Ekaite had given birth to six children and counting. The villagers could tell she was even with another child. Yet, Ekaite had a secret lover, Adam, the famous village carpenter. Adam was a very close friend to Ekaite's family. And so it was okay for anyone who saw them together to think they were just being good friends. It was far from that. Ekaite considered her husband too old and unattractive and chose to spend most of her market time at Aten's house. On one of such days, when she sneaked into Aten's house, a villager saw her and it was obvious that it was not just an affair to be ignored. A woman who bore six children for her husband? Why would she be frolicking with another man? The villager quickly went to Asuko's stall to report what he had seen. And to his regret, Asuko disbelieved him and warned him sternly never to speak ill of his wife again. The same thing he did when two other villagers previously brought him similar report. It was also on one of such days that news went round the village of Chief Udoma's pregnant wife, who could not put to bed despite being in labor. The villager said she was screaming, I'll confess so, I'll confess, as though some spirit was coercing her to do so. And when she finally confessed that she had slept with four men, including her husband's brother, everyone at the scene knew it was Ekbunkawo who had come to serve Chief Udoma's wife, her punishment for cheating on her husband. They say she put to bed a stillborn, but the stigma she was going to live with after then was enough for her to beg for death instead. The Ekbunkawo deity became feared more and more by the villagers. No woman dared to commit adultery and go scot-free. Well, except for the case of Ekaite perhaps. Or perhaps not. One day, Ekaite, on returning from her love spree with Etim, stopped by the market to pick some vegetables. She had been craving a dikangikon for days, and Etim had given her some money to sort herself out. She went home, prepared the soup, and served it to her husband and children. Asukwa was indeed happy. He complimented his wife a thousand times. Truly, the way to a man's heart was through his stomach. But that night, something strange happened. Please, can you take out a little time to subscribe to my YouTube channel? It is free. Thank you. Now let's go back to the video. The whole family was awakened by strange noises. The door of the hut was pulled open in a creepy manner. Asukwa quickly stood up to close the door. But then, Asukwa started to choke and scream. It seemed as though he was being strangled. Don't kill me. I didn't know. Ekaite was restless. She didn't know if to scream or run out to seek help in the dead of the night or to calm her crying children, or to be by Asukwa's side. Asukwa was pointing towards the door. 
He seemed to be seeing something no one else was seeing. His eyes popped out as he held his neck screaming. He died. In no time, Ekaite's hut was filled with the villagers. Her screaming had grown louder and had awakened the entire village. It's a bunkawo. The villagers were whispering, Nsamyo, she has killed her husband. You her lot of a wife. There was no consolation for Ekaite. It was obvious that she had used money given to her by her lover to cook for her husband. That alone would invoke the rage of a bunker woe. Ekaite was to leave the village immediately with her six children. Her husband would be buried before sunset the following day. Ekaite's teary eyes darted through the crowd of villagers. Her lover, Etim, was not there. Before she could say a word, she was stripped naked and her bags were thrown out by angry women. You better begin your journey. One woman snarled. Ekaite pleaded and pleaded. She took one last look at Asuko's lifeless body before leaving the compound with her children. No trace of her was to be seen at the break of dawn. Hello family, I hope you enjoyed today's tale. Please leave the lessons you have learned in the comment section and the country where you're chatting from. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.